Hello guys, it seems like a while since I built a tank. I think the last one was the British Sherman in the Christmas in a Desert diorama, which I built a month and a half ago. So I thought today I would build this Tamiya Samoa S35. Now this of course is a French tank, but large numbers of them fell into German hands after the Battle of France. And with that in mind, although this kit comes with these two very nice, quite intricate colour schemes, which I am tempted to do, However, in the end, I decided to paint this in German grey to represent a captured tank. And of course, I recently did the Renault R35, which has a similar camo scheme to the instructions for this kit, so I wanted to do something slightly different. This is a Tamiya kit, so of course it goes together very easily indeed. Even the wheel assemblies are not particularly fiddly. There's two of these on each side, plus a smaller one. And one thing you'll notice once they're in place is that there's some nice detail of the springs and so on, but most of that is going to be covered up. We have this lower side skirt here, and then this upper side skirt which covers all the rest. I haven't seen any reference photos where these side skirts are missing or removed. Not like with German vehicles where you often see them missing from tigers and so on. So I decided to leave them in place. Moving on to the top of the vehicle and the engine grills go on nicely. There's no photo etch here because Tamiya kits generally don't include that. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a Tamiya kit that does include it. And all of these hatches and panels go on very nicely. They're recessed on the inside so they can't move around, they can't go in anything other than the correct orientation. And of course there's no interior so it makes sense to keep all of these closed. There is this nice little nameplate which goes on the front and the back. I love the way they've put the name on the tank there, that's a nice little detail. As always there are a few extra details to add, like headlights and so on. and these small rails on the outside. And these quite distinctive boxes on the outside of the tank are apparently used for ammo storage. The kit comes with a length of chain which you have to attach to the rear. It's a little bit fiddly and it involves making a cut in this ring and threading the chain onto it, but it looks really nice when it's done. The turret assembly goes together easily, with the gun using poly caps so that it's still movable. There's a hatch on the rear which you can pose open if you use the included figure. But as I'm going to paint this as a captured German vehicle, I'm going to close that hatch. I don't have a German figure in the same pose and so it would be pointless to leave that hatch open. As you can see here from the original French version, there is no way for the commander to get out the top of the tank. These cupolas were often modified on the captured vehicles and uh, replaced with Panzer III cupolas. I didn't make this change simply because I don't have the spare parts to do that. Tracks are individual links which I haven't seen from Tamiya before, but they snap together, there's no glue required. There's 102 links on each side, and once you get the technique right they snap together very quickly and easily. And they're still workable once they're together. As you can see there, that's a very nice fit for those tracks. Perfect length and everything. I 
Another thing I noticed in your reference photos of captured vehicles is the use of spare tracks on the front of the tank. I guess it makes sense that these are used as extra protection, the same thing as we see on Sherman's quite often. And since I had a few spare tracks left over, I thought I would put those on. So at this point I gave the model a coat of Tamiya Grey Primer and then a coat of XF63 German Grey. And almost immediately I decided I didn't like this and I wanted to do something different. So I did a bit of research and I came across these images here. Now these are images of obviously S35s which were in French hands, uh, which were captured by the Germans at the fall of France and then were recaptured by the French forces in 1944 when Paris was liberated. So because it's quite late in the war we can assume that the German paintwork would be the three colour dark yellow, brown and green paintwork. And looking at how hastily the Cross of Lorraine and the French flag have been painted on these vehicles, I think it's fair to assume that the German paintwork has not been painted over. So I decided to do something a little bit different and go for this. So with that in mind I gave the vehicle a coat of dark yellow and I made this colour from Tamiya's XF60 dark yellow which is kind of their traditional dark yellow colour and their new XF88 dark yellow too. And the mix was about 50-50. For the green and the brown I used NATO green and NATO brown. To get the rust effect on the exhaust I painted them in a metallic grey colour. And when that was dry, I added a couple of shades of brownie orange Vallejo paint. And I used a sponge and the sponge chipping technique to apply those browns. I added a few dots and a few small patches of the dark yellow paint to make it look like this was the original coating and it had chipped away or flaked away due to the heat on the exhausts. And then finally for the exhaust I used some AK rust deposits and I went over the whole exhaust with those to try to blend in the separate colours. And I also added a few spots of a darker rust deposits as well. To make the vehicle look a bit worn and a bit beaten up, I use a lightened version of the dark yellow base paint and I used XF57 buff to lighten that. And I used a combination of brush chipping and sponge chipping, applied mainly on the edges and on raised areas. Then inside a couple of those larger chips, I put small amounts of a dark brown colour to simulate a kind of rusty primer colour. The tracks were given a coat of a dark grey colour with a small amount of brown mixed in. And when that was dry, I used some silver paint on the raised areas which would be in contact with the running gear to try to give the impression of polished metal. In the reference photos that the exposed raised areas of the track were very very bright and uh, often very worn so I gave quite a heavy brushing of silver onto those raised areas to simulate that effect. I took some Aptai Lung 502 shadow brown oil paint, thinned it down with enamel thinners and applied it as a wash around certain details. You can see here for example it flows in around the recess on the hatch and that has the effect of making those details stand out nicely. You can see there the difference between the hatch on the right and the hatch on the left that doesn't have the effect. And likewise with the engine grills, they are supposed to obviously look down into the engine so those spots need to be dark and I use the oil paint to make that happen. 
And of course, if there's any excess wash in places you don't want it, you can clean it up easily with a brush dampened in enamel thinners. I wanted to give a bit of tonal variation to the vehicle and make it look a little bit like the paint where it was slightly faded, or there's lots of sort of dirt and dust and rain streaks down it. So I used a technique which I haven't used for a while, which is an oil dot filter. And basically that involves taking oil paints of various colors. I used a light buff color, a couple of darker and lighter browns, and even a yellow kind of color. Adding dots of those to the surface, and then streaking them down the paintwork with a brush which is either dry or only lightly dampened in enamel thinners. And as you can see there, that looks quite horrible at first, but as you blend in the paints, it takes on a more subtle effect. On the sides of the vehicle, I went vertically to simulate dirt and rain running down the sides. For flat surfaces, it's a bit harder. I normally blend in a circular motion for those. For the mud and dirt effects, some of the reference images show extremely filthy vehicles, as you can see here. I didn't want to go too heavily, but I did want to concentrate quite a lot of mud on the skirts over the wheels. That's where most of it tends to be concentrated in the reference images. The technique I decided to go for was using some enamel effects and using those to basically bind some pigment to the model. So I started with a dark brown enamel effect. This is a streaking grime color. And this effect is not really the mud itself, it's just mapping out where I'm going to put the pigments. So you can see there I've put lots behind where the tracks will be, and then in the recesses on those side skirts and so on. And then I took two pigments, a darker one which is asphalt road dirt, and a lighter one which is a generic brown, I think it might even be burnt umber. And while the enamel effects were still wet, I applied the darker pigment all over the top. Of course, the fact that the enamel is wet means the pigment will darken, but it will return to its lighter colour once it dries out. And again, this looks a complete mess at the moment. Once that darker pigment had dried for a while, I took the lighter pigment and I added that over the edges of the darker pigment and straight on to directly onto the paintwork itself. And the idea there is to try to blend the two together to smooth that transition. And there were times doing this when I decided to add a bit more of the enamel effect and apply the lighter pigment over the top of that. This is one of those tasks where it's easy to think you've made a total mess of it and it does look quite bad while you're in progress, but you need to remember that things change when they dry. And if there were any edges which were still not blended properly, you can always reapply some enamel thinner and blend those out still. I use a similar technique on the tracks where I dampen the tracks with either enamel thinner or the enamel effect and then added the pigments on top. And of course that meant I did have to go back later and redo that silver um, highlighting effect which I probably should have left to the end anyway. Okay, and here you can see the mud as it started to dry, and it does look better. Again, it needs a little bit of reworking still, but I'm fairly happy with it. And then finally for the mud, I took some AK wet effects fluid and added small amounts of that in the recesses, basically to simulate areas where water got in and hasn't dried out yet. At this point I decided the vehicle still wasn't quite dirty enough for me, so I decided to do some oil rendering effects. Normally I would do these earlier in the process, but I didn't decide that I needed them until quite late on. This process involves taking some unthinned oil paints, 
putting a few dots onto the tank and then dry blending them in to simulate sort of shadows and dirt around areas. I did that on the engine deck and around those vents. and in other recesses and corners around the vehicle. The effect is subtle, but I think it works quite well. Finally, to get some contrast back, I went over some of the raised edges with a lightened version of the yellow base color. And I put tiny amounts of that on just the very raised edges, like the hinges there and the handles. Once the weathering was complete, I added the markings of the Free French Forces. I left it until this late stage because I didn't want it to look like the tank had been in French hands for long, so I wanted these markings to look like they were literally painted today or yesterday. And to achieve that I just used some simple acrylics. It doesn't matter if the markings are a little bit messy, in fact it helps because if you look at the reference photos they are also quite messy. I found some spare decals to put that number 34 which you can see on the turret in the reference photo and then just painted the cross of the Lorraine and the French flag. And with that done the entire model was given a coat of matte varnish and then it was complete. So let's see the final result. And there we go guys, that was my French Samoa S35, captured by the Germans and then recaptured by the French and painted in the free French markings. I really enjoyed building this and in particular I really enjoyed researching and painting it. I'm finding myself drawn more now to um, less common camouflage schemes, unusual schemes and so on. Uh, captured tanks of course are an obvious example of that, uh, but there are a few other ones out there as well which I'll be coming up with in the future. Just something to break up the shelf of the usual green allied tanks or the uh, three colour German tanks. What's coming up in the next video? That is going to be a full build, painting and weathering of TACOM's Panzer III N variant. And that is TACOM's fairly recent uh, Blitz kit. As always, there is still plenty in the pipeline. I've still got my uh, resin model of the wrecked Japanese Zero in progress. That's got a little jungle diorama I'm working on as well. And I've got another interwar slash early war German tank which I'm building. I can't pronounce the name so I'm going to show you a picture instead. And that will be up fairly soon as well. And before I go it is time to say thank you very much to my wonderful Patreon supporters. Their names are on the screen at the moment. Thank you very much for your support guys. It is greatly appreciated and all the resources from my Patreon supporters do of course go straight back into the channel either buying kits or products um, to make my channel better. So thank you very much for your support guys, it's greatly appreciated. And of course if you want to join my Patreon supporters you can see the links on the screen now to do that. So guys until next time have a wonderful week and I hope to see you next week.